On the morning of September 1st, 1859, astronomer Richard Carrington noticed something odd in the sky. Looking through his private telescope in the countryside outside London, he saw a series of dark spots on the surface of the sun. He sketched these spots. He then witnessed what he called intensely bright and white light. The light lasted only a few minutes. He had no way of knowing that at that moment, a massive cloud of magnetized gas was heading toward him. Within 18 hours, the strongest solar storm ever observed would hit Earth. We're a new channel. If you like science but don't have time to read studies, subscribe. We're glad you're here. Colorful auroras lit up skies around the world that night. Those seen in Colorado were so bright they woke gold miners, who thought it was morning. Americans living on the East Coast said they could read newspapers by the light. Reports of the lights came in from all around the world, from sailors near the equator to people in Siberia. But there were more serious consequences of the solar storm, too. Some telegraph operators were electrically shocked. Others could continue to send and receive telegrams even though their machines weren't plugged in. So what caused this? And why? Japanese and British scientists recently wrote a paper reanalyzing this strange event. We now know this was caused by a white light solar flare. These happen when the sun's magnetic field lines rearrange and reconnect, which discharges subatomic particles. The light Carrington saw was electrons sped up to half the speed of light. This massive release of energy caused what we now call a coronal mass ejection, or CME. Like the name suggests, they are ejections of superheated plasma from the sun's outer atmosphere, or corona. If they happen to be aimed at Earth, CMEs squish the side of our magnetic field that's facing the sun and extend the night side. When this night side tail of the magnetic field reconnects, it releases energy, which is directed back toward Earth. Weaker CMEs typically only cause auroras at the Earth's poles. Auroras happen when the charged particles collide with gas atoms along the magnetic field lines in the upper atmosphere. Stronger storms send enough charged particles into the atmosphere that it disrupts technology. The paper explains the Carrington event was probably preceded by another large CME a week before. That first storm was larger than the one that hit on September 1st, 1859, but the bulk of it missed Earth. New research also suggests Carrington is not an outlier, but rather one example of extreme events that occur more frequently than we'd like. Storms in 1872 and 1921 were almost as intense and one in 2012 that barely missed Earth was stronger. More on that in a second. A hundred years ago, it was only telegraph machines that were affected. But today, every type of modern technology is at risk. A CME in 1989 pushed Quebec's power grid offline for several hours. It also jammed shortwave radio and interrupted communications with satellites over the Earth's poles. The space shuttle Discovery even reported a sensor malfunction during the storm. More recently, two large CMEs narrowly missed Earth by just nine days in 2012. It was bigger than the Carrington event, and the scientist who discovered it said, we'd still be picking up the pieces if it hit us. He calculates the odds of a Carrington-class storm hitting Earth each decade is 12%. A declassified report from FEMA says a CME on this scale would destroy one-sixth of the satellites around Earth. 130 million Americans would lose power as the electric grids overheat. They estimate recovery could take up to 10 years. Thankfully, some governments are preparing for this risk. The U.S. Department of Homeland Security is investing in recovery transformers that can be installed anywhere in an emergency. And the Department of Energy is building a strategic transformer reserve that can replace destroyed machinery. This summer, space agencies in the UK, US, and Europe announced they would collaborate on a more advanced early detection system. If you're fortunate enough to get advanced warning of a solar storm in the future, here's how you can prepare. Wrap each electronic item you own in cloth, then wrap it with plastic wrap or a plastic bag. Next, wrap it with at least three layers of aluminum foil. Place these items in a cardboard box, 
Then wrap the box with at least three layers of foil. With this, you've just created what's known as a Faraday cage to block electromagnetic radiation. Of course, these devices won't work if the power grid is knocked out, but you will have a head start once transformers and cell towers are repaired. Share this video with someone who doesn't know about the 1859 Carrington event. Links to the academic study and FEMA report are in the description below.